The process of turning a 3D scene into a 2D image or movie is known as rendering. So far, we've been working in our 3D viewport, manipulating and editing objects. But rendering is how we get those images and compositions out into the world. Here is our default scene here. And if I go ahead and render an image, I can either go to the render menu here and select render or hit the hotkey F12. A separate window should appear and show us a render of our shaded cube. If we put this window over to the side and take a look at our general default, you can notice that the angle that we're looking at in our viewport is different to the render. That's because the render has taken a snapshot from the point of view of the active camera. So if we select our camera and hit numpad zero to swing into its camera view, you'll see now that this is indeed the image that has been rendered. The window that opened is the image editor. If we go to the image menu and select save as, navigate to where you want it saved, give it a name and click save image, now we have a PNG file that we can share with our friends. Now let's go back and take a look at the render menu once again. There's more than just a single image as a render option. And we know that eventually we would like to render entire animations as well. And there's a hotkey for that too, Control F12. Pressing this will begin to generate frames, but let's not do that just yet because Blender will output this to a temp folder and you don't know where that is right now. Also, it will generate 250 frames that look exactly the same because nothing in this scene has been animated. There's an option here as a tick box called lock interface. If you've ever used Adobe After Effects, you would know that you can direct some of your PC's resources by pausing any refresh on your screen to get a slightly faster render. That's what this does, but for Blender. Now, for all of these other options to make sense though, we should take a look at our properties panel and select the output tab. That's this icon here that looks like an image file that's being printed. This is where I can set the image resolution, frame rate and range for my animations. And I can even set an output folder to put my renders in. Let's click on this folder now and create a specific folder somewhere that we'll remember later on. Now below this, you should see the file format. PNG is the default, but we can select a number of formats from here, including one to create a movie file for an animation. Although I wouldn't recommend this, most people like to work with still images as a sequence. The color is set to RGBA. That's a color image that also includes an alpha channel for any transparency. When we hit render, Blender stored that image in a temporary folder until we told it to save it in a particular format in a particular place. If we render animations, it will do this save automatically each time it moves a frame. Now our render of the cube looks very much like our solid shaded view. So let's open a more complex scene which has some objects that have textures and materials that will interact with in-scene lighting. This is a treasure chest that has been modeled by Kent Trammell. It has materials and textures that look like wood and metal, and there's a light here. If I look at this in my rendered shading view and move my light about, you can see how it interacts with the metallic surface. I'm going to switch back to my solid shading view. It appears gray. We don't see any of the textures and the object seems to be illuminated from somewhere, but it's not necessarily this in-scene lamp. Now, if you take a look at this downward arrow next to the viewport shading icons, they reveal contextual information about the shading in the viewport. Solid shading has a lot of options to help you approximate some material and lighting situations without having to ray trace or generate any materials or textures. And this can be quite fast for working. The next one across is your materials preview. This is essentially the Eevee render engine. 
and it allows you to view many options, including in-scene lighting and world lighting, or sometimes known as global illumination. It is a fast way to preview your scene, see materials, and how light will interact and render with your textures. The last one is rendered preview. Depending on the render engine you'll be using, this should show you a fairly faithful approximation of what your scene will look like with all of the final effects. We'll go back to our properties panel and select the render tab. That's this icon that looks like the back of a digital camera. Right at the top, we can select a render engine. I'm going to begin with Workbench. As soon as I select this, the settings reflect the options under Solid Shading Mode. Now you might also notice that our 3D viewport only now shows three modes. We're in the rendered mode for this engine, so let's use the options in our Render Properties editor to explore a bit. Under Lighting, we have three options, Studio, Matte Cap, and Flat. If I click on the Sphere Preview, I can select further options for each. I'm going to enable this small icon that looks like a globe here and mess about with the rotation. I can now control the direction of the studio lights. I'll switch over to matte cap now and select one of the options. I'm gonna go with this shiny one. As we middle mouse and drag, we can orbit around our view and see how the surface reacts. What it's doing is it's applying a single image texture to all of our objects that stores static lighting and reflection information. That we can render these simple materials as a final output is pretty cool, and they will render quickly. This is fantastic for checking how the surfaces will behave under different lighting conditions. But let's switch our render engine to Eevee now. The 3D viewport now has our fourth icon back, and we're still in render preview, this last icon. Eevee has plenty of options for rendering, including how many samples Blender should calculate when previewing in the viewport as opposed to rendering, how shadows should be approximated, and it even has some basic ray tracing options. In the viewport, we can enable it to render in scene lighting and even a world setting. Now, if we switch off world setting, this will cancel out any material we might have in our world properties. And instead, we get the option to assign a number of preset environmental lighting setups and even rotate them. Now, let's switch over to Cycles, Blender's fully featured renderer. The options here are many. And you'll notice that the viewport will take some time to resolve an image when we're in rendered mode. If you rotate a little bit or zoom in and out, the viewport needs to render the samples before delivering an in-scene render. However, cycles can take full advantage of any hardware that you might have. By default, it's relying on your CPU to make its calculations, and that's why it's slowing down a bit. But should you happen to have a good GPU, you can tell Cycles to use that instead. In fact, under our preferences, you can view options for your specific GPU to optimize performance. Now my viewport samples render so much faster when I'm zooming in or out or rotating, and this is freeing up the CPU to calculate other things. The relationship between viewport and final render is also an important one. For example, we'd normally set our final render samples much higher than we would for the viewport, as it takes a lot more time to calculate all the light bounces to generate proper shadows, caustics, and reflections. There are even some options to view what a composited effect might look like, or even individual render passes, this is fantastic for spot checking your work, because once you commit to that render for a complex scene, you could be sitting there for literal hours. Now, if you have the hardware and you're going to be working mostly on photorealistic stuff, I highly recommend using cycles and take some time to get your settings right and find a balance between the samples you need in your viewport to see a close enough approximation 
to your final rendered samples for those stunning high quality renders. But keep in mind that you can downgrade to Material Preview, which will allow you to see what your scene looks like in Eevee or even Solid Shading mode. Now, if you want to learn more about this topic, I would highly recommend the Core Fundamentals courses on Lighting and Compositing, which will give you a more thorough and solid understanding of rendering as an area of interest. We've certainly covered a lot in this lesson, so maybe you might want to go back and refresh your memory over some of the key points that we covered before we move on to the next lesson. <music>